This video is going to be reviewing cube roots a little bit, but then also taking it one step further and um, actually start to solving problems that have cube roots within them. So the first thing I want to go over is just a review of some um, definitions kind of that we've talked about. So first of all, we have just a straight definition of what a cube root is. And that is just simply a number multiplied by itself and then multiplied by itself again. So um, for instance, seven multiply it by itself and then multiply it by itself again. Okay, the next one I wanna talk about is what's called a perfect cube. Okay, a perfect cube is any number that can be written as the cube of an integer. So in other words, what that means is, um, we'll do a few examples here. If you take the cube root of, let's say 125, okay, what number times itself, times itself again would give you 125? Well, that's just an even five. It's an integer, it's not a decimal, it's not a fraction, so this would be a perfect cube. If you were to take um, another one, let's say the cube root of eight, that's going to give you two, because two times two times two equals eight. So these are both examples of perfect cubes. Um, one that would not be a perfect cube, um, I don't know, something like the cube root of 12. If you were to figure that out, put that into the calculator. Let me pull mine up here really quick. If I put in 12 and then I find the cube root of that, you get this great big long decimal. You do not get an integer. So that would not be a perfect cube. Okay, but we'll still be um, <clears throat> estimating these, dealing with them a little bit, but for the most part, we'll be dealing with things that will be perfect cubes. So moving on, we're going to do some <clears throat> examples that come straight out of the textbook. First one I want to look at is the cube root of negative 27. So remember, we have talked about previously that you can have the cube root of a negative number because a negative times a negative times a negative would give you a negative. So we know this is going to be a negative number. We, then we just need to figure out what the cube root will be, and that ends up being Three. So negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 would give you a negative 27. Okay, another one like this we're going to do is um, taking the cube root of a fraction, which we've talked about a little bit. So let's say we have the cube root of 1 64th. So again, we're splitting this into two. We're actually taking the cube root of 1 over the cube root of 64 and taking them each separately. So the cube root of 1 is 1, and the cube root of 64 is 4. So your answer would be 1 fourth. Okay. Then moving on to um, examples where they're actually embedded into a problem. Okay, so if we have a problem like this, it's 2 times the cube root of negative 216 minus 3. Um, remember, in these problems, we just need to follow the order of operations. Okay, so you always want to do the cube root first. So we're going to take the cube root of negative 216. That ends up being a negative 6. Okay. Everything else just comes straight down, that minus 3, and then the 2 times all of this. And if you just keep following down with um, the order of operations, 
You know that multiplication comes before subtraction, so we're going to do this multiplication next. 2 times a negative 6 would be negative 12. Still have the minus 3, and we end up getting negative 15 as our answer. So whenever you're doing these, just make sure the cube root, square root, and all of that kind of uh, serves as part of the parentheses. You want to take care of that and the exponents. Um, take care of all that before you do your multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and all of that. Okay, I want to do one more similar to this. And here it is. So we have the cube root of 125 cubed plus 121. <clears throat> now, the first thing I want you to notice is the only thing that's inside these parentheses is the cube root of 125. And we know that the cube root and cubing something are opposites. Okay, so the cube root, this whole symbol, and this cube will actually cancel each other out. And the only thing that you would be left with is the 125. And then we just simply need to add 121. So you would get 246. Now, if you didn't follow that, if I break that up and actually do the work for it, um, remember, Order of operations says we have to do what's inside the parentheses first. So the cube root of 125, well, what number times itself times itself gives you 125? That would be 5. Okay, we still have that cubed out there, plus 121. Exponents come next, so 5 cubed, 5 times 5 times 5 brings us right back to 125. and then you add the 121. So <clears throat> either way, if you could see right to start out with that that cube root symbol and that cube to cancel each other out, then perfect, go about that way. If you would rather work it out like this and it helps you see it a little better, you can do it that way as well. Okay, now we're gonna start looking at some algebraic examples where they start throwing in some variables in there. Okay, so it's actually <clears throat> really easy because all of these, they're going to throw some variables in there, but then they're going to tell you what the variables equal, and you just have to plug the numbers in. So we have x over 4, or x divided by 4, plus the cube root of x over 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 192, and I'm going to put it wherever I see an x. So, we have 192 over 4 plus the cube root of 192 over 3. Okay, I'm going to take care of the cube root first. Now, the first thing I want to know is, can I simplify this part, the 192 over 3? Can that go in evenly? So, if I start to divide it, 3 goes into 19 6 times, 3 goes into 12 4 times. So I can simplify that fraction and make it 64. So now we have 192 over 4 plus the cube root of 64. Okay, I'm going to take care of that, finish taking care of that cube root. So what number times itself times itself again? would give me 64. So if I rewrite this up over here, because I've run out of room a little bit, this part gave me 4. Okay, so right now I have division and addition. Order of operations says you have to divide first. So I'm going to take care of this. 4 goes into 19 4 times and into 32 eight times, so that gives me 48. And then I still have to add the four, and you get 52 as your answer. So again, 
just plug in the numbers into um, where the variables are and then just start to solve it. Okay, so your assignment for this lesson is the worksheet for 7.2. So it'll be 7.2 practice A, and then that will be due first thing tomorrow.